Greetings, this is Chris here from Woodman Spirit Channel. Today I'd like to uh, do a brief presentation on uh, an often overlooked piece of the Bushman or Woodsman's kit, uh, namely the hiking staff. Now the hiking staff is a, a very, or can be a very useful piece of equipment and of course it uh, needn't necessarily be uh, a costly item. Today there are so many people using aluminum hiking poles uh, which can run into quite significant amount of money but I prefer uh, to use the cheaper option and uh, also in the process have some fun in making myself a hiking staff so I've fetched a selection of, of staffs that I've accumulated over the last few years just to show you um, why the you know what materials I use and uh, how I choose the best uh, the best uh, staff for the job just a, mo just a moment I'll uh, bring these over to you so here here are three examples of hiking pole. Now there are many ways you can use a hiking pole and my list is by no means exhaustive but uh, I mean primarily they can be used for uh, ensuring uh, that you can travel safely over rough terrain. Um, you can use them for fording across streams or through bogs you can also use them for uh, testing the thickness of ice if you uh, have to cross an area of, area of ice. Um, they can also in extreme conditions be used as a defensive weapon. Uh, I've used them many times for uh, walking through briars and rough brush to you know, part the way so I don't end up getting uh, cut up by the, uh, the briars or thorns. Um, and the, oh, the other uses that can also be used for uh, if you use a tarp shelter you can make, do a makeshift pole uh, to hold up your tarp shelter using a hiking staff. Uh, one of the key things uh, you know once you've found yourself a nice straight uh, piece of wood to uh, create a hiking staff is uh, to decide how long you want it and there are a lot of different considerations when you talk about uh, the length of a hiking staff. Just let me show you. I, I would say this is, is quite a long hiking staff. It's certainly slightly higher than my shoulder and I would say it's probably on the brink of uh, uh, you know the maximum length I would wish to use. I mean, there are extreme circumstances when I might like to use something a bit longer than this. Um, this one is made from a piece of um, Douglas fir, which uh, actually isn't common in the area where I am at the moment. Uh, this occurs more, more in the valley bottoms and in the lowlands. Um, and with this one, it's got a nice little uh, curve in, in, the, in the top which uh, makes a natural hand grip. It's fairly thick uh, and fairly strong, there's very little bend, very little bend in the wood uh, which, is, uh, which is quite essential because if um, you're going down uh, let's say a, a steep trail and you want to reach out ahead of you and, and steady yourself as you're going down the hill you don't want something that's going to bend or ultimately uh, snap. Um, I won't go into uh, the finish on these too much in this video but uh, this one has had most of the bark scraped off with the exception of a little bit of the inner bark. Uh, so that one is uh, probably 5 feet 4 inches in length. And here you can see there's one uh, that's probably about 5 feet in length. Um, now this is made of a, a different uh, wood. This is made of um, vine maple which 
it is actually quite difficult to find a nice straight piece and of course you uh, really do you know you would prefer I'm sure to have a, a straight piece of of wood to make a hiking staff um, the nice thing about this though it is pretty straight there's very little in the way of uh, I'll try and get back so you can look down lengthways uh, there's very little uh, twist or bend on this one um, and the thing is it's quite quite a hard wood as well so yeah, it makes it uh, durable and uh, even though um, it's fairly thin, probably well, not much thicker than my thumb, it's uh, strong enough to, uh, to provide uh, support on, on tricky uh, trails. Uh, whereas this one here is, uh, is a little heavier uh, and uh, probably more durable but uh, not necessarily it's not necessary that you would need one as thick as this. So this is uh, again is vine maple and this is uh, Douglas fir. This is this is a third um, this is a third kind of wood and there's quite a lot of this growing around here, but it does take a little effort to find one as straight and as thick as you would like. Um, again. This goes from the the bottom of um, this is the bottom of the staff, and this is slightly thicker than my thumb, to probably uh, twice the thickness of my thumb there at the top. Um, you notice too, I've taken some effort to sand paper around the top so there's no sharp edges on here in case you you know you're going down the steep incline and you want to rest on on top of it like this um, but uh, you know being made of this is made of aspen and aspen is uh, uh, when it's green is a uh, fairly soft wood it's um, probably quite flexible but the beauty of this is as it dries it uh, hardens significantly and also when it dries it, it, it becomes very light so this is extremely light I mean, this would be as light as, a, as, as something uh, made of, uh, ma of man-made materials. Um, but there again, it's. Uh, I've left the bark on this, and you will notice on some of the others I have left bark on them because my thinking on this is that when you leave the bark on, it stops the wood drying out too much. Um, and when the wood dries out too much, most woods will crack particularly in, in a dry atmosphere like here in uh, the southern interior of British Columbia. So by leaving the bark on, assuming the bark's okay, I mean this is one of the things about um, aspen is the the bark is quite smooth and silky, not unlike birch in a way. Uh, so usually when I pick these fresh I just knock off all the little joints where the uh, twigs and branches have come out, uh, sand over, over those sharp points uh, with a piece of fine sandpaper and then give them a coat of either diluted uh, linseed oil or a combination of um, pine tar, turpentine and linseed oil. And, you know, Wipe these over a couple of times twice a year and then that pretty much seals them and prevents the a, it prevents them from cracking but also uh, prevents them from uh, uh, the, the bark scaling off. Um, yeah and it I mean it also provides a bit more colour I mean this is a very white wood when you take away the, the bark so I quite like this mottled effect on this one and the slight roughness even though it's not a, a really uh, rough kind of bark the slight roughness and uh, combined with the uh, the treatment on the wood is uh, is excellent for grip, which is another consideration. You want something that's not too too slippery. So that one's aspen. And this is uh, this is aspen. Uh, this one's not a terribly good uh, staff, but I was looking around for some samples this morning, and uh, the bottom of this is probably. 
slightly thinner than my thumb and the top slightly thicker, right? So, a little bit on the long side again for me, it's um, uh, probably about 5 feet 6, 5 feet 7 long, because I'm about uh, 5 feet 10. Um, you can see the more natural grey colour of the bark on this one, which uh, has a nice soft feel to it. And sufficient roughness on it, it's been, I think it looks like it's been cut with a saw at some point, a chainsaw or something. Um, but of course you, you can make this look a lot better and improve upon it by uh, taking the steps that I've mentioned earlier. It has a slight bend in there and that actually uh, makes uh, an annoying vibration when you're walking and hitting the ground with it. Um, so, if, you know, the straighter you can find a a staff the better. Um, again that is Aspen. And finally there's another one here I made of Douglas fir. Now this is uh, <laughs> this is uh, probably well yeah it's, this is as thick as, uh, as as two fingers right so that's uh, maybe an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half diameter at the top and uh, slightly over an inch at the bottom um, but like I was saying earlier with uh, this one unfortunately being left out in the sun too much and it, and it gets quite hot round here and what's happened is you will notice there are some cracks in here but I suppose the uh, salvation for this is that uh, it's quite a he heavy piece of uh, wood and therefore it's not significantly weakened it and uh, you know I'm leaning, leaning on this with a lot of weight and it's barely bending at all um, again this is probably five feet eight long a little bit long but you know I would use this one for if I'm going through uh, quite rough terrain and I'm crossing perhaps a muskeg or, uh, or some creeks or rocky streams just to give me that bit of stability as I'm wading through a stream. Uh, it would sure, surely would be defensive as well. Um, I mean it's heavy enough to uh, to fend off an animal. I'm not purporting that you have full-blown contact uh, combat with a bear but uh, certainly it does give you a sense of having something substantial should uh, the need arise to protect yourself from the situation but again overall I would say for most people and maybe for me it's a little bit heavier than what I would like to walk around with but it has dried out a lot albeit at the expense of cracking but uh, that has reduced the weight to somewhere around about uh, I don't know probably less than a pound between, between half and three quarters of a pound in weight which uh, is by no means unmanageable. So I'm going to briefly uh, just have a little foray into these uh, into this woodland and try and show you uh, how to find one of these uh, one of these uh, stems to make a, or branches to make a, a walking staff from. Uh, so uh, just wait right there and uh, I'll show you how we do this. So let's see how we do with this. Okay. I'm just going to take this back into the clearing because it's uh, it's not the easiest place to be working in here. So here we are. Managed to uh, cut two poles, which are actually, uh, I think this was a branch on a vine maple, and this one was just a young uh, sapling growing in a. Uh, a very dense area of wood uh, therefore it's grown it's bolted quite uh, long and straight it has a 
a bit of a twist in the end there and uh, yeah a very slight bend 18 inches from the bottom whereas this one has a curve at this end which is not too bad really because um, that allows you to manoeuvre your hand round near the near the uh, top of the staff to uh, accommodate different uses. Um, it has a slight curve on it but you can actually straighten these out by putting them between two blocks while they're still green and uh, hanging a weight from a cord uh, or heating it in front of a fire and probably bending it across uh, your knee or a uh, full crump, making a full crumb between two trees or something but uh, yep the back's quite smooth on this so when we come to the point of um, treating this to preserve it we just leave the back on use a, a pot scourer you know like a steel pot scourer or a na heavy nylon scrubbing pad or um, uh, medium co uh, to coarse grip sandpaper just to uh, knock all the sharp edges off and the you know, things like the uh, the lichen that's growing on this right so the only thing we need to do now is decide how long we want these this again is uh, probably plenty long enough for most conditions I uh, could afford to cut a little bit off depending on your height whereas this one is uh, well, must be seven feet tall therefore that's quite good in a way because it gives us chance to decide whether we want to take any off the thick end at the top or to uh, cut a bit off the bottom uh, so I'm just hitting the ground with this just to see you can see it's vibrating which is uh, not the best thing in the world but uh, uh, I think in the circumstances you have to compromise somewhat so I'm going to cut a little bit off this I'm going to make it um, probably I'm going to take some of the the top off because the top is quite heavy and I think that contributes to the the vibration when you're walking so I'm going to cut the top 12 inch or so off this um, I'll use this uh, folding saw which is a, uh, a SOG saw I've had for some years. It's not the best saw in the world, but it's um, quite ergonomic and it has a fairly coarse teeth on it, which is uh, can be useful because some of these new saws have a very fine teeth which easily get clogged up. So here we go. I'm keeping this cut as straight as possible. Uh, just that it looks better and it's also more comfortable if you have to lean on top of it. There we go. That's pretty hard wood that. Uh, let's look at the bottom. It's nice to finish with a, a knot or something on the bottom because it uh, actually has, uh, helps to prevent it splitting. Or you could alternatively get some copper tubing or brass tubing and put a ferrule on there or even steel tubing for that matter so I'm probably going to cut it down another uh, not length wow it's still so well over six feet tall so I can take a little bit more off Yeah, so that's about uh, five foot four, five foot six. Uh, I'm just going to knock these uh, little crookses off where there's been um, twigs coming out, small branches coming out.
Okay, well, that's not too bad. I'll probably take a rasp or a cause sandpaper to these joints when I go home and just uh, make a smoother job of it. Uh, so yeah, that's fundamentally usable. We can uh, still take a little bit off once we get this, uh, once we've used it a while, depending on how we feel about it. Uh, it's quite smooth back on this one. There's no lichen on this one. Therefore, this is going to be very easy to uh, put a, a coating of linseed oil or pine tar kerosene linseed oil mix. Okay, so thank you for watching and um, this has been a longer video than I anticipated but uh, that just shows you have to spend time um, finding something that's going to work for you in woodland. Not all trees have straight branches for sure. Thanks for watching and uh, look out for more videos uh, in the near future.